September 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 49 and 50 from the Old Testament. Listen to me, you coastlands. Pay attention, you people who live far away. The Lord summoned me from birth. He commissioned me when my mother brought me into the world. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. He hid me in the hollow of his hand. He made me like a sharpened arrow. He hid me in his quiver. He said to me, You are my servant, Israel, through whom I will reveal my splendor. But I thought, I have worked in vain. I have expended my energy for absolutely nothing. But the Lord will vindicate me. My God will reward me. So now the Lord says, The one who formed me from birth to be his servant, he did this to restore Jacob to himself, so that Israel might be gathered to him, and I will be honored in the Lord's sight. For my God is my source of strength. He says, Is it too insignificant a task for you to be my servant? To reestablish the tribes of Jacob and restore the remnant of Israel? I will make you a light to the nations, so you can bring my deliverance to the remote regions of the earth. This is what the Lord, the protector of Israel, their Holy One, says to the one who is despised and rejected by nations, a servant of rulers. Kings will see and rise in respect. Princes will bow down because of the faithful Lord, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is what the Lord says. At the time I decide to show my favor, I will respond to you. In the day of deliverance, I will help you. I will protect you and make you a covenant mediator for people to rebuild the land and to reassign the desolate property. You will say to the prisoners, come out. And to those who are in dark dungeons, emerge. They will graze beside the roads. On all the slopes they will find pasture. They will not be hungry or thirsty. The sun's oppressive heat will not beat down on them. For one who has compassion on them will guide them. He will lead them to springs of water. I will make all my mountains into a road. I will construct my roadways. Look, they come from far away. Look, some come from the north and west, and others from the land of Sinem. Shout for joy, O sky, rejoice, O earth. Let the mountains give a joyful shout, for the Lord consoles his people and shows compassion to the oppressed. Zion said, The Lord has abandoned me. The sovereign master has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her baby who nurses at her breast? Can she withhold compassion from the child she has born, even if mothers were to forget? I could never forget you. Look, I have inscribed your name on my palms. Your walls are constantly before me. Your children hurry back while those who destroyed and devastated you depart. Look all around you. All of them gather to you as surely as I live, says the Lord. You will certainly wear all of them like jewelry. You will put them on as if you were a bride. Yes, your land lies in ruins. It is desolate and devastated. But now you will be too small to hold your residence, and those who devoured you will be far away. Yet the children born during your time of bereavement will say within your hearing, This place is too cramped for us. Make room for us so we can live here. Then you will think to yourself, Who bore these children for me? I was bereaved and barren, dismissed and divorced. Who raised these children? Look, I was left all alone. Where did these children come from? This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I will raise my hand to the nations. I will raise my signal flag to the peoples. They will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their shoulders. Kings will be your children's guardians. Their princesses will nurse your children. With their faces to the ground, they will bow down to you and they will lick the dirt on your feet. Then you will recognize that I am the Lord. Those who wait patiently for me are not put to shame. Can spoils be taken from a warrior or captives be rescued from a conqueror? Indeed, says the Lord, captives will be taken from a warrior. Spoils will be rescued from a conqueror. I will oppose your adversary and I will rescue your children. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will get drunk on their own blood as if it were wine. Then all humankind will recognize that I am the Lord, your deliverer your protector, the powerful ruler of Jacob. This is what the Lord says, Where is your mother's divorce certificate by which I divorced her? Or to which of my creditors did I sell you? 
Look, you were sold because of your sins. Because of your rebellious acts, I divorced your mother. Why does no one challenge me when I come? Why does no one respond when I call? Is my hand too weak to deliver you? Do I lack the power to rescue you? Look, with a mere shout, I can dry up the sea. I can turn streams into a desert so the fish rot away and die from lack of water. I can clothe the sky in darkness. I can cover it with sackcloth. The sovereign Lord has given me the capacity to be his spokesman so that I know how to help the weary. He wakes me up every morning. He makes me alert so I can listen attentively as disciples do. The sovereign Lord has spoken to me clearly. I have not rebelled. I have not turned back. I offered my back to those who attacked, my jaws to those who tore out my beard. I did not hide my face from insults and spitting. But the sovereign Lord helps me so I am not humiliated. For that reason, I am steadfastly resolved. I know I will not be put to shame. The one who vindicates me is close by. Who dares to argue with me? Let us confront each other. Who is my accuser? Let him challenge me. Look, the sovereign Lord helps me. Who dares to condemn me? Look, all of them will wear out like clothes. A moth will eat away at them. Who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys his servant? Whoever walks in deep darkness without light should trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. Look, all you who start a fire and who equip yourselves with flaming arrows, walk in the light of the fire you started, and among the flaming arrows you ignited. This is what you will receive from me. You will lie down in a place of pain. God, we have two choices with you. We can either fear you and obey you, even in the darkness, as it says, or we can kindle up a flame within our own belief systems, our own kingdoms, our selfishness, and receive torment from that. You know, sometimes it feels like when we make choices that you want us to make, things that we know would be in your will, sometimes, honestly, it feels like torment then. Uh, things don't go as we had planned. Things don't go in a happy, <laughs> joyful way. Uh, it feels like there's a lot of pain sometimes in those choices to fear you and to be obedient. And yet here you're saying, no, 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 if you choose what you want, there will be fear <laughs> and torment. So God, help us to understand the difference between the two. Help us to understand that when we are going through something, it is for an ultimate purpose. You are being very intentional in allowing those things to happen to us. I was actually thinking about this the other day that somebody said in uh, talking about a relationship I had, um, that I said, I just am still confused why God would allow that to happen to me. And she said, oh, I don't think that relationship had anything to do with God. I think it was the devil. And I said, but don't you understand? We serve a God who reigns supreme over the devil. If God actually wanted that relationship stopped or to not happen in the first place, for me not to have to ever meet that person, he could have stopped it. And so God, there, there lies confusion in that, of allowing that pain and that hurt and that anger and frustration and all of that, those tears that came with that relationship, allowing that to happen and trusting in you that you have our best interest at heart, that you will always want what is best for us, what is good for us. So through our tears and our pain and what feels like torment, we need to understand that our, obedient and f our obedience and fear of you is way more important than going back to our old way of living, of choosing our own desires and our own fire, as, as Isaiah puts it, because that torment is going to be different and it's going to be real and it's going to be intentional and it's not going to be for a greater purpose. God, as I mentioned, please allow us to discern between the two of these and understand very clearly that what we see is pain and hurt and anger and frustration when we are obedient to you, that it is all part of your bigger plan for us. 
that it is allowing us to pursue godliness, glorifying you through how we respond to those situations, and allowing our lives to, to worship you through our actions. God, help guide us into the truth of what it is that you want our path to look like. Help keep our steps directly on that path. In your son's name I pray. Amen.